Whoa, what's that, Mr. Newbold? Well, glad you asked. I just got these new tubes for my above the ground pool. Woo, above the ground pool, whoa, yeah. Cause my old one kind of broke during the winter time. Should have put them away sooner. I was like to swim, you know, polar bear style. What the? So uh, just to trying to get uh, my pool working again, my salt pool, just bought a thousand pounds of salt. It's so much salt. But then it's less chlorine I have to use in my filtering as well. So just helping you now on a 8.1 standardizing and uh, Z scores. So here's the uh, chart, right? Here's a chart for Z scores that they help us to try to figure out probabilities, right? Like the percentage of, you know, someone walking in the room that's uh, below average or above average, that kind of thing. And so let's just jump into it and try to explain how it's working. So these scores are already standardized. That means they're between um, negative three and positive three, right? Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero is the average. And then one standard deviation, two above the average, three above the average. So for example, find the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that satisfies each of the following statements. So what is below, right? What z-score is below 2.85 standard deviations? So what we do is we go to our z-score and so we're not in the negatives, we are in the positives. And so this chart tells you that score that they're asking for and below to the left. So this will help us with that one. So again, we're looking for 2.85 and below. So we go 2.8, which is going to be right here, and 0.5. So let's go ahead and show you how this works again. Ready? This is using the chart now. And so we have 2.8 which is gonna be this row. 2.8 is gonna be this row, good. And then we're looking for a 2.85, so we're looking for a 0.05. Oh, there's our 0.05, that makes it 2.85, which is what the problem wanted, nice. And so where those intersect is gonna be our answer. Woo! Where it intersects is gonna be our answer. Mm, mm, mm. So we're looking for 0 0.9978 is what we're looking for there. So 0 0.9978 is what we're looking for. There it is. Well, what about greater than 2.85? Well, that's going to get a little bit trickier now, right? It's going to get a little bit trickier. The reason why it's going to get a little bit trickier is you want above. And this chart only goes below. So how would you do above? Well, you would find below, which we already did. And then you do 100% minus that to get above. Oh, oh, okay. Because you're trying to find this shaded region that's not shaded. So you have to do 100% minus this big one to get this blank one that's now shaded. So yeah, so all you got to do now is um, take the one we found just on our chart there, which was 0.9978. And so we're going to do one, which represents 100%. Uh, minus 0.9978. So 1 represents 100%. 0.99 represents 99%. So that gives us 0 0.0022. So we're looking for 0 0.0022. Supposed to be another 2 there, but that's okay. Cool. Does that kind of get the idea there? Now, what if you want to do between some things? Ooh. Highly recommend you just use the calculator, but we will show you with the chart, even though it's kind of crazy, we will show you with the chart. So you would go negative 1.33. So we come over here to negative 1. So negative 1 point, negative 1.3, we're going over to the 3.3. 3. Okay, so that's 0 0.0918. Let's type that in there. 0 0.0918 is one of our answers. Or you can write it down. I was just using the calculator. So again, that's negative 1.33. Wait a second, that's not negative, it's positive. Oh yeah, positive 0 0.0918. Okay, good, it's positive. Okay, the other one they want then is 1.65. So then we go up here to 1.65, which is right here, 1.6, and then 5 is right here. So we get 0 0.9505. So now we have two answers, 0 0.9505, but we got to either like add them or subtract them or do something cool like that, right? 
Okay, add them, subtract them, do something cool like that. Well, let's see. So we're looking for this picture and what it represents, right? And so we got our 0 0.9505. Let's just say it's right here, 0 0.9505. And then that's what this whole length is. And then our other length is way down here. Well, maybe not that far. Um, but our other one is going to be what? It's going to be negative 1.33. Okay, okay. So that's the percentage, 0 0.9505. And then we found another percentage, which is really close to zero because it's just below average, and that's the 0 0.0918. So 0 0.0918. That's weird that that's actually the answer, huh? Negative, negative 1.33? I feel like it should be a bit bigger than that. Let me see. Negative 1.33. Negative 1.33. Yeah, I thought it was bigger than that, silly old bear. Let's show it to you again. Okay, so this is negative 1.3, and then not 0.0968, because that's uh, just this negative 1.3. Um, we want negative 1.33. Uh, let me see. Oh, so no, that's right. That's 0 0.0918, which is just 9%. Oh, let's see, nine percentile, that is down there below the average. Hmm. I just imagined it to be a bit bigger than that, but I guess not. Okay, so then uh, 0 0.0918, so cool. So you have that one there, which is right about here. So that's uh, 0 0.0918, good. Okay, so now you're looking for the percentage between them. So if you take your big number, 0.95, right, 05, and you minus the 0 0.098 percentage like that, then if you minus that percentage, then it's going to give you what you want. And uh, what you want is between them, right? Yeah, you want between them. You want the percentage between them. So we're going to go ahead and do the 0 0.9505, and we're going to minus the 0 0.0918, and that's going to give us 0 0.8587. 0 0.85, 0 0.87 is the answer to this one, which is close enough to that one. Perfect. So I'm also going to show you that you could, you don't have to use the chart for these. If you don't want to, you could just use the calculator. I think we taught you this last time. And so it's standardized scores. That's fine. So again, you're going to go second VARs, and you're going to use normal CDF. Let's check our answer. So we went from uh, what? We went from negative 1.33 to 1.65 with the mean of zero because the standardized score, mean of zero, standard of one. And so this is what yours should look like if you're using just a TI-83, regular 84. So normal CDF, um, parenthesis, negative 1.33, comma 1.65, comma zero, comma one. Don't forget this comma zero, comma one. And so there it is, 0.8587, which is six rounds of seven up to an eight. So that's right, 0.5888. So what if you want to use a calculator for something bigger, like greater than negative 1.66? You can actually second enter, bring up the last thing you did. You can actually do that, and it's even easier than the chart. Watch this. So what we do is we go negative 1.66, good, comma. And then we want, let's say we want greater than negative 1.66. So you're just going to choose a really big number, like 9999. That'll be way bigger, so that'll go all the way to the end of our curve, normal 0 and 1. Woo! 0 0.9515. So that one's going to be 0.9515. Can you get the idea? Can you get the gist of it? So this second question, you're going to use a mean of uh, 266 and a standard deviation of 16. And so what proportion of parentheses lasts between 240 and 270? And so... I would use my calculator for that, right? I would use a calculator for that. And so you're going to say from 240 to 270, basically, is our lower bound is 240, comma. Our upper bound is 270, comma. With a mean of 266, comma. And a standard deviation, whoa. And a standard, only one comma, and a standard deviation of 16. 54% chance of proportions last between 240 and 270. That's scary, actually. Oh, my goodness. 
So there's your 0.5466 using the graphing calculator. Making sense? Making sense? So I think you kind of get the idea of it, right? Using normal CDF is way faster than the chart. You would have to convert all thisnessness if you're going to use your chart. You'd have to convert it to like 0 and 1, which would be crazy, right? You'd have to convert it to um, like your average would have to be like 110 minus 110, and then that would be an average of 0. How would you convert your... So I even forget now. There's actually a way to do it. But how would you convert your standard deviation is onto terms of z-score, right, with 110. Yeah, that's interesting. That'll bring me back to AP stats. Just use the calculator. Just use the calculator. So again, a uh, calculator for this one. You're going to use a, a mean of 110 and a standard deviation of 25. What portion of people have IQs less than 120? So you would say like a small negative number. So like, I don't know, negative 999, comma, and then what portion of people have IQs less than 120? So that's where we go second insert, and we type in a 1, um, 2, 0, oh, right arrow, and then 2, 0. So now you have a lower bound of a really big number, an upper bound of 120, and we want less than 120, so that looks right to me, with an average of 110 and a standard deviation of 25. So you get 0 .6554, 0 .6554. Woo! What proportion of people have IQs greater than 175? So then you would do that same process, but you would start at 175 and go to a big number, like um, comma 9999, four nines, three nines, whatever you'd like there, with an average of 110, starting to 25. Woo! 0 0.0046, wow, 0 0.0047, that's close enough. Okay, cool, so hopefully you get the idea of how to use the chart. For these uh, first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven problems. And then just using normal CDF for the next two. So appreciate you. Don't forget to swim in your pool this summer or whenever you're watching this. Maybe it's Christmas. What the? Thanks for watching this video. Probably summer. Yeah, probably summer. Thanks for watching. Peace out. And bye for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Woo! Peace out.